Trained, trained up, up in Torah. Happy first anniversary. Thank you for making these videos for us. We are enjoying watching. My favorite one was Noah's Ark. Mine too. We, we love doing the arts and crafts. Here's too many years of watching. Happy birthday! Thank you to the Trained Up in Torah team for making these beautiful videos. You guys have truly been a blessing to our family. Happy birthday! Shabbat shalom! Shabbat shalom! This week, yeah! <laughs> this week this week is a super special week. Why is it so special, you guys? Why it's, 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 it's trained up at Toy's first birthday. Yep. Our first birthday? Yep. You mean we've been doing this for a whole year? Mm -hmm. That's pretty special. That's something to celebrate. Well, you know what? What do we do? Do you know what we're covering today? No. Well, you know what? We're talking more about Joseph, right? And the scarcity of food that's coming, and he's he's uh, he's having a tough time, right? And I'm I'm not gonna give the story away though, right? So we are going to tune into a song and a prayer, and listen to the scripture story, and then we are going to have a nature lesson, and we'll see you back here soon. All right? Shama. Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malhuto, Leolam Bible stories, craft, and night rest. I have all the people that have contributed. And happy birthday! Father, thank you for this day that you made. Thank you for another Shabbat and for bringing us through this another week and for your goodness to us and your many blessings. And we pray that you please be with us in a special way as we celebrate your Shabbat. Um, I pray that you would um, teach us and you would lead us and guide us. And may we honor and please you in all that we say and all that we do. We love you so much. We thank you and pray this all in Yeshua's wonderful name. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. I have a song I'd like to share. Uh, and this is a song based on the chapter when Joseph's brothers come back to Egypt and they bring his little brother, Benjamin, with them, and the way that he may have felt when he saw him. And this is a song called Little Brother.
Shabbat Shalom. Genesis 43 But the scarcity of food was severe in the land. And it came to be, when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Mitzrayim, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. But Yehuda spoke to him, saying, The man vehemently warned us, saying, You do not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you let our brother go with us, we go down and buy you food. But if you do not let him go, we do not go. Because the man said to us, You do not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Yisrael said, Why did you do evil to me to inform the man that you still had another brother? And they said, The man kept asking about us, and our relatives saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? And we informed him according to these words. How could we know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Yehuda said to Yisrael his father, Send the boy with me, and let us arise and go, and live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I myself shall stand guarantee for him. From my hand you are to require him. If I do not bring him back to you, set him before me, then let me bear the blame forever. For if we had not delayed, truly by now we could have returned the second time. And their father Yisrael said to them, If so, then do this. Take some of the best fruit of the land in your vessels, and bring a present down for the man. A little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds, and take double silver in your hand, and take back in your hand the silver that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. It could have been a mistake. And take your brother, and arise, and go back to the man. And El Shaddai give to you compassion before the man, so that he shall release your other brother and Benjamin. And I, if I am bereaved, I am bereaved. And the men took that present and Benjamin, and they took double the amount of silver in their hand, and arose and went down to Mitzrayim, and stood before Yosef. And Yosef saw Benjamin with them, and said to the one over his house, Bring the men home, and make a great slaughter, and prepare, for these men are to eat with me at noon. And the man did as Yosef said, and the man brought the men into Yosef's house. And the men were afraid, because they were brought into Yosef's house. And they said, It is because of the silver which was put back in our sacks the first time that we are brought in to throw himself upon us, and to fall upon us, and to take us as slaves, our donkeys too. So they came near to the man over the house of Yosef, and spoke to him at the door of the house, and said, O oh, my master, we indeed came down the first time to buy food, and it came to be when we came to the lodging place, that we opened our sacks and saw each man's silver in the mouth of his sack, our silver in its weight, and we have brought it back in our hand and we have brought down other silver in our hand to buy food. We do not know who put the silver in our sacks. But he said, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your Elohim and the Elohim of your fathers has given you treasure in your sacks. Your silver had come to me. And he brought Simeon out to them. And the man brought the men into Yosef's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet and he gave their donkeys fodder. And they made the present ready for Yosef's coming at noon, for they heard that they were to eat there. And when Yosef came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house, and bowed down before him to the earth. And he asked them about their welfare, and said, Is your father well? The old man of whom you spoke, is he still alive? And they said, Your servant, our father, is in good health, and is still alive. And they bowed their heads down and did obeisance. And he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spoke to me? 
And he said, Elohim show favor to you, my son. And Yosef hurried, for his emotions were deeply moved towards his brother. And he looked for a place to weep, and went into his room, and wept there. Then he washed his face, and came out, and controlled himself, and said, Serve the food. And they set him a place by himself, and them by themselves. And the Mitzrites who ate with him by themselves. For the Mitzrites could not eat food with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Mitzrites. And they set before him the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at each other in astonishment. And he took portions to them from before him, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. And they feasted, and they drank with him. Do you know what that means? That they set before him the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth? And the men looked at each other in astonishment? That means they set them down in order from who was oldest to youngest. And see, they think that they're strangers. So that's why they're astonished, because they're all in order. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, that's the end of this chapter. Next week, we'll pick up right where we left off. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to a very special episode of Trained Up the Torah. This very day, one year ago, we posted our very first lesson, which was the first chapter of Genesis, the creation story. And it's hard to believe it's been a year already, but at the same time, it seems like all the people that's on our team, like we've been together for forever. Um, so I wanted to say thank you for being a part of Trained Up in Torah and being a viewer and giving feedback and sharing with us encouragement and the things that you like. Y'all mean a lot to us and that is the reason for Trained Up in Torah. So I thought today would be a great time to, oh, I miss Kaylee. It just dawned on me the other day, the last few episodes, I haven't been saying who I am. And I don't know if that's just because we've been together for so long. I just assume y'all know who I am. But I realize I haven't been introduced to myself each lesson. And I know we always have new people come up. So I'm Miss Kaylee. I am the founder and the manager for Trained Up in Torah. And so anyway, I wanted to share the birth of Trained Up in Torah. But before I do that, yeah, I'll do that first. Okay, so a year and like a month ago, we went to a congregation, my family, and we were there at the congregation. And after Sabbath, when most families had left, there was just a few adults left over. Um, they were discussing how they needed something for their children because they didn't have a children program at their congregation anymore. They used to, and because of different things that were not within control, they, they didn't have a children's program anymore. And it was during a time where most churches were locked down. I got to be careful with what I say. Uh, I don't want to get flagged on YouTube. And I just had the idea, well, a lot of people are going to be doing church services from home, you know, on the internet. Maybe there's some other kind of kids program that they could, you know, lock into and just, you know, come together and watch it together at the congregation on on the TV and they could talk about it together and if there was a craft or songs or whatever they could do it together and with it being that time period I thought that there probably would be something like that well after we left I got home so it's late Saturday night and I just thought oh well I'll go look and see if I can find any good ones maybe there'll actually be a Sabbath school one maybe there'll be a Seventh Day Adventist you know church doing one or something like that so I started looking and there was a few different 
ones that I saw that were decent and they, they had some really good ideas. And it all of a sudden hit me as I was watching that. I was like, why can't we do something like this? Why can't us as Torah observant, Messiah loving believers, why can't we come together and have volunteers, you know, have a few different subjects and if they present something that's like three to five minutes long it takes more time than that because we have to research and prepare and create what we're going to do but still if you're only creating three to five minutes worth of something and you have say 10 15 people then that creates a whole lesson and it takes it off of having the one person week after week after week after week at one congregation doing all the planning all the arts and crafts all the everything and so I just had this idea that very night and I went and I know that Yahweh put that on me. I went in the Torah Observant Facebook group and I just posted, would anyone like to come together to create a virtual Sabbath school program? And it blew up. I mean, very quickly, there was over three or 400 comments. A lot of people excited saying they need something like this or they wish they had something like that when they had children that were still at home or a ton of people saying, yes, they wanted more information. They would love to help. It very, very, very quickly blossomed from that into a full blown, okay, we're doing this. We're a team. We've got a logo. We got a name that makes us official, right? And we've included y'all along the way. As we were deciding a name, we put it out on Facebook and in a lot of groups asking people, what are your opinions for good names? and having everybody vote on them. And on our logos, we had uh, several logo ideas come up and we asked y'all to vote on it. And y'all have been important and a part of our team from the very, very beginning. And anyway, so it blossomed and we have lovely, lovely contributors who have joined the team who are like family to me now. And some of my very, very best friends now are contributors. And it's just been a very beautiful thing. And I've watched Yahweh work through this time and time again. It's amazing from just lining up the perfect music to go with the song or to connect this person over here who's doing an opening song. And they're talking about something in their song that matches somebody else on the total opposite end and then never talk to each other. Um, there's just Yahweh will put where we're talking about the same phrases. And we don't plan everything out. All we do, we have a few rules and we have where we know what scripture verse is going to be the scripture verse and everybody just tries to match it. So when we have things just intertwine, it's Yahweh and we watch it over and over and he provides in amazing ways over and over. And so another thing that I thought when this was kind of an idea and coming together was there are a lot of people who are isolated. They don't have a congregation. They don't have anywhere, nowhere near them just as other families, let alone an actual congregation. And there is not very much for children that's Torah observant. Um, there's a few things, but the things that normally are Torah observant, not all, but most of them are going to be not Messiah loving as well. Or you have a lot of Christian Messiah loving things, but not so much on the Torah. And so there's just not anything like this that I had seen that's quite like this, putting both New and Old Testament, the whole thing, cover to cover, putting it together and putting it out there and uh, being a part of our beliefs and training our children and the way they should go. And that's a hard job, especially now with all the technology and all the things going on. And so we wanted to be a part of that and helping you on that journey to be able to give another resource to help your children to train them in the way that they should go. So that's how Trained Open Torah happened, and it was a massive explosion, just an idea, and it blossomed overnight, and I have never even been a part of anything like this before, let alone been in charge of something like this before, and even the people, most of the people that have contributed, they they have never done anything like this, or a lot of them were, come to me and be like, oh, I want to help, but I'm new to Torah, or I, um, I'm not really good with technology. Actually, most, most of our contributors have told me they're not good with technology. And still, you always work through them. Actually, one who was really, 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 well, there's a few who are really worried about technology. They've just blossomed and they, they create wonderful presentations. One of our earlier contributors, she had only had a cell phone for a year. And with only having a cell phone for a year, she ended up creating all of her stuff on her phone. 
using using different apps and things and so it's just like Yahweh has touched so many people and given them what they needed to be able to do this even when they were super self-conscious and worried in the beginning and we have got comments all over from people who are isolated that this is so wonderful for them because they don't have anything or there's just not anything for children there are a lot of tour observant stuff out there but usually it's adult sermons or you know adult teachings not really things for children one of the biggest things to me in creating this was that it was scripturally accurate extremely scripturally accurate and i don't know about your experience but my experience we have almost nothing that is you know a children's book or a movie that is fully scripturally accurate and that's very very important to me now we do have children's bibles and things that we have but normally we don't read what it says because it's not right we just tell the story to the children and let them look at the picture so it was really important to me that this was Torah observant messiah loving and scripturally accurate so there you go that was bertha trained up in torah and so before we go i wanted to share with our first lesson the creation lesson it has had 2571 views that means that a phone or a TV or a computer has turned that lesson on 2,571 times, which, I mean, it's not like millions, like some videos get, but that's, that's pretty significant. And maybe not everybody watches it all the way through. I don't know. But when I saw that and I thought for a minute, I was like, that's not 2,000 people. That's 2,000 screens, 2,571 screens. When you turned on Trained Up in Torah and watched a lesson, is it just you alone? Or are you maybe there with all your brothers and sisters? Or are you there with your mom and dad and your siblings? Or maybe even your grandparents? I figure most people are probably watching it with their family. And so I started thinking, well, how many people would that be? So I just kind of took an average of a family of five, three children and two adults. Some families are smaller, but you know, in the Torah community, there's some families with 10, 14 kids. So that, uh, I figure that's probably a good average. So see, let's see what that would look like. How many people might have been watching our first lesson? 12,855 people might have possibly watched our first lesson. I thought, wow, that's a big deal. Cause I've never been to a church or a congregation that had 12,000 people in it. And so then I was kind of curious, well, how many people are in most churches? So I went to Google and I asked Google, what is the average member size for a church in the U.S.? And it came up and said the average size church sits 200 people, sits 200 people, but usually have about 65 people come weekly. 65 people come for the sermon each week. Now, you have bigger churches and smaller churches, but that's the average for the U.S. And I was like, wow, most churches end up having 65 people hear a sermon. And this little bitty volunteer, just volunteer parents and children from around the country are putting together something that over 12,000 people might have seen. That's a pretty, pretty big deal. And I happen to know that there are people that are sharing it with other people who are not Torah observant and they're actually watching it. And so they will be learning more of Yahweh's truths through this just because somebody shared it with them. And I know there's people even in their 80s who are enjoying Trained Up in Torah all the way down to one or two years old. So it's a big, big thing. We planned for it to be for kindergarten through fifth grade, but we kind of had the feeling that all of y'all's children might be able to learn from it and enjoy it. And that seems to be what's happening. So I just wanted to give all that. I know that was kind of long, but uh, anyway, it, it's a big deal. And y'all is using it all over the place to touch a lot of people. And so we appreciate you being a part of us. We appreciate when you like the videos that actually helps YouTube to go and share that with other people. The more likes you get, the more they're likely to show it to other people and share Yahweh's word. Oh, and another thing I want to share too, we have had many people, they say not only are they isolated and they don't have a congregation to go to, and so that gives them something as a family to do, but it also was really, really good for their children to see they're not alone. They are not the only ones keeping Sabbath and the only ones keeping tabernacles and Passover, and they're not the only ones, you know, 
using the name Yahweh or wearing tzitzits, they're not the only ones. There are other people. And that's really important too, because you're not alone. And it can feel, it can feel like it's really lonely, but you're not. We are all over, all throughout the country, all throughout the world. Sometimes we just don't have red flags showing where we are, but there are people all around the world that are walking just like you are, and you're not alone. You're part of a big family. And with that said, we have another big announcement, which is very, very good timing with this being our, our uh, first birthday lesson. We have a new Trained Up in Torah family member that's just been added to our family. Miss Paige had her baby the other day. That's a big deal. So another person for our family and for Yahweh's family. And on top of that, Yahweh is really growing his family. And we have a whole bunch of contributors who are pregnant right now and about to have babies. Hallelujah. But that also means that we're going to have less people helping on Trained Up in Torah some. So we might be doing some weird things where maybe the ending song doesn't really match the story, but it's still a praise song. So we might have some weird things like that happening as people are having their babies and they're tired and they're getting up every two hours and they need a little bit of break. But uh, we'll still be here. Um, also, if Yahweh has laid it on your heart that you might want to help with Trained Up in Torah, we are looking for more contributors to help. And so if you would like to help, you can reach out to us on Facebook. You can also email us at trainedupintorah at gmail.com and let us know how you'd like to help or if you'd like to help or if you don't know, but you just feel like you would like to help. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, just reach out and we'll connect with you and we'll talk and we'll answer any questions and get you any kind of info and see if this would be a great thing for you and for us, but we'd love to have you. All right, let's get going. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. everybody. We're here to celebrate the first year of Trained Up in Torah. My favorite part of Trained Up in Torah was Noah and the Ark. I really understand it more, and I really like the craft, too. Carolina? What's your what favorite? You I like, like music and the craft. I think Trained Up in Torah has been such a blessing for many reasons. Uh, the program has something for everyone. It's got prayer, um, worship, uh, wonderful teachings, crafts, Hebrew lessons, uh, just everything that the whole family can do all together. It's, it's been a great blessing and I hope that they continue to grow and continue to bless many families. Happy one year anniversary, Trained Up in Happy Torah. Happy one year anniversary. Bye. Shabbat Shalom. This is Eleanor with your nature lesson today. I bet you are wondering what is a famine and what causes a famine. The definition of famine is extreme scarcity of food. Also, the word famine is a noun. A famine can be caused by different things, including war, natural disasters, crop failure, and population imbalance. Droughts are a natural disaster that can lead to a famine since crops cannot be grown in such dry conditions. Some other natural disasters that can cause famine are things like tsunamis and hurricanes which cause flooding. Seasons of heavy rain can also cause flooding. Earthquakes and even wildfires can cause them too. There are many different things that can cause famines. Famine due to crop failure is when growing conditions are not favorable and the crop doesn't have a large harvest. When you have repeatedly bad harvests, you, we won't have as much food as you are used to harvesting. This is why Joseph stored spoke to Pharaoh about storing grain during the good seven years of crop to help supply food during the seven bad years. Here are a few places that have suffered famines. Judea, Egypt, France, the United States, and a ton more. Get ready to learn about some more famines in history. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Shalom. Part of Sabbath school is the art. Thank you. Hi, this is Eleanor. I love that we get to learn about the Torah together on Trained Up in Torah. I have learned tons of things. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. 
It's Miss Aylin right now. I love training up in Torah because we learn more Bible verses and we learn some more memory verses. And Miss Haley and you guys are super nice. Shabbat Shalom! Hey guys! So it started raining on our party outside, so we decided to bring it inside so we wouldn't get all wet and blown away with all the wind. But wasn't that an awesome story? Now, I'm going to have to ask, Asher, what do you think that, that Yosef was feeling when he saw his brother Benjamin for the first time? Happy. You think he was feeling happy? Yeah. Why do you think he was feeling happy? Because, um... I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he missed his brother. All right. Well, Shaylee, what do you think that his brothers were feeling whenever they were sitting there and they knew that they had done nothing wrong? Well, they were kind of like maybe scared, excited. You think that they were scared and excited? Yeah. Yeah? Sit there eating with them in, in Joseph's house, but they just still didn't know that that's who he was, right? They just thought he was a big, important person, and they thought, why would I get to do that, right? Why do I get to eat with, with this guy? But, you know, I'm really excited to see what happens next, right? So I have another question for you guys. What is your favorite part of Train Up and Torah? Wait, favorite episode? Okay, what's your favorite episode? What's your favorite story so far? My favorite story is 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 Joseph and the cupbearer and 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 um, Esau and the presents. Esau and the presents. Okay, Asher, what's your favorite story? Um, um, Joseph and the cupbearer. Is it okay? Um, Esau. Really? Okay. What? <laughs> Any more? Um, oh, and I got pumpkin. Let it finish. Um, and, and, and Joe, and, <laughs> yeah, well, I think two is pretty good. We've not covered too many stories. Um, we just and, continued them on. But what's your favorite? Part of Train Up and Torah. Oh, you know my favorite part? What? I love the songs that they do in the beginning. Like, I love them. They're so much fun. And they work really hard to make these songs every week for you guys. What's your favorite? My favorite part is, is, um, is, the, is the craft. You like the craft? And, 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 the, and the scripture. The scripture story? Yeah, that's I like always the fun. Crack and the it's crack in the scripture. I thought you told me you liked the snack part. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you like the snack part? I like the snack part. Yeah, it's always fun to eat. What about you guys? What's your favorite part? Well, you know what? We would really love it if you shared it with us, if you had your parents send us a message to Train Up in Torah on Facebook sometime, and we would love to hear what your favorite part is or your favorite story or anything else you would like to share with us. So, next, you guys, do you know what we're doing next? We're going to have... Hebrew and history and another story. And right? that? Not yet. Not yet. Another story. And then we will be back here soon. All right? Bye. 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 What's your favorite part about Sabbath school? Is it the music? Yeah. Happy birthday, Trained Up and Torah, from the Groom family.
Bet and Gimel Dalit, A and Bob and Zion, Chet and Tet and Yod and Kaf, Lamit the Moon Samakayin, Pay and Sade, Kof and Reis, Sin and Sheen and Tav. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Happy one year to Trained Up in Torah. Mazel Tov. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's Matthew. Today, I'm going to teach you all a little Hebrew about questions. Now, when we write questions in English, we put a question mark at the end of each question. But in Biblical Hebrew, there are no question marks. So how can we know if a person in the Bible is saying or axing something? A few times, only context is used. You just have to think and decide whether someone is making a statement or a question. But many times, there are different ways with words and letters in Hebrew that tell you if a sentence is a question. Let's look at a couple. One way to know if something is a question is if it has the question words who, what, when, where, why, and how. In this week's story, Jacob asks his sons, Why, Lama, did you do evil to me? Lama is the Hebrew word for why. Repeat it after me. Lama. Lama. And let's learn two more. The word for who is me. Me. And what is ma? Ma. Let's learn another word we can use with these question words to make questions. The word for this in Hebrew is ze. Ze. What is this in Hebrew is ma ze. Ma, what, and ze, this. Hebrew doesn't always need the word is. And who is this is me ze. Me, who, and ze, this. Of course, not every question has one of these question words. In these types of questions, Hebrew puts a letter he, which says ha, at the very beginning of the question, instead of at the end, as with question marks in English. But since Hebrew is read from right to left, this letter he that asks the question is on the right side. Let's look at a couple of examples in today's story. When Joseph's brothers come back to Egypt, he asks them, Hashalom avichim? There is the hey at the beginning which starts the question. Ha shalom, which attaches to the first word of the sentence, which you are probably familiar with. Shalom, which means peace or welfare. And the word avichim means your father. Ha shalom avichim, is your father well? A bit later, Joseph asks, Haze achichim? First is the letter he, ha, which starts the question. It's attached to ze, this. The second part is achechem, your brother. Haze achechem? Is this your brother? And finally, before we end, let's learn some opposite words to make questions with. The Hebrew word for good is tov. Tov. And its opposite, bad, is ra. Ra. So to ask, is this good, we can say, haze tov? Ha makes it a question which attaches to ze. This. Is this tov? Good. And to ask the opposite, we say, haze ra? Is this bad? Lastly, let's do a quick review of what we've learned today. To make questions in Hebrew, we can use question words, lama, why, 
ma, what, or me, who, or we can attach a letter hey, ha, to the beginning of a sentence to make it a question. This week, you can practice asking the questions we've learned today in Hebrew. I hope that you all enjoyed this lesson and that you all have a blessed week. Shabbat Shalom. Hi, my name is Kayla. Did you know Trained Up in Torah is having a one-year birthday? No. Yeah. You did know that? Yeah. Do you like Trained Up in Torah? Yes. Yes. Can you tell Trained Up in Torah happy birthday? Happy birthday! Bye! Shabbat Shalom, Havarim! Miss Jessica here with our history lesson today. In the very beginning of our scripture story, we see that food was scarce in Canaan and that the grain that they had bought back from Egypt had already been used, so they were in need of food again. Today we're going to talk about some famines that have happened throughout history. The definition of a famine is an extreme scarcity of food or shortage of food. There have been many famines across the world at many different times. Famines can be caused by many different things as you learned in your nature lesson today. Are you ready? Let's go! From 2200 to 2100 BC, there was a famine that reached much of the world. Many places were flooded or were impacted by wet conditions while others were affected by drought or dust storms. Nearly every continent was hit with one or another cause of famine during this time period. When this happens, and the famine covers so much of the earth, it's called a global famine. In the years 800 to 1000, the Mayans faced a severe drought that led to a massive famine which ultimately had a hand in the collapse of the Mayan civilization. A drought is when there is little to no rainfall, as you already know. In 927 to 928, the Byzantine Empire faced a famine caused by four months of frost. <laughs> Some famines can even be caused by the cruelty of man. In 1069 to 1070, England, lots of land was scorched or burned on purpose by a cruel king in order to starve out the folks that remained there. Russia, in 1601 to 1603, faced famine due to a volcanic winter caused by a volcanic eruption in Peru. The volcano left tons of particles in the air, which then traveled and created a volcanic winter in Russia and other areas. Famine caused by this volcanic eruption has been documented in many other places as well. Some of those areas include France, Latvia, and Germany. According to the dictionary, a volcanic winter is a reduction in global temperatures caused by volcanic ash and droplets of sulfuric acid and water obscuring the sun and raising Earth's albedo. This means increasing the reflection of solar radiation after a large, particularly explosive volcanic eruption. Did you guys know there are areas facing famine even today? Be sure and ask your parents permission first, then maybe you all can look into present day famines or droughts together as a family. And also, look up what you can do in times of a drought to help conserve water while you're at it. That's all for our history lesson this week. Shalom. Shalom everyone. My name is Eliana Bond. I am eight years old and I love to watch Train to Pintora because they have script, because I learn scriptures. Hebrew lessons and crafts. Shalom! Shabbat Shalom boys and girls. This is Anaya and today we are talking about honesty. Honesty is something talked about all through scripture. Honesty means to tell the truth and not to lie or be deceitful. Being honest can seem like a hard thing to do, but in the end it is always the right thing to do. John 8 22 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Being honest is the right thing to do no matter how bad the truth might seem. Lying is never the answer. Lying hurts you and everyone around you and makes things ten times worse. As we see in Genesis 43, Yosef's brothers come back to Mitzrayim. 
and with them they brought back the silver that was returned to their sacks. In Genesis 43, 18-19, we see that his brothers were scared of what might happen to them because of the silver. Yet, even though they were scared of what might happen, they were honest with Yosef and told him what happened, and the truth set them free. So the next time you have done something wrong and you are scared to tell the truth, remember the truth will set you free. Now you might still get in trouble for what you've done, but it's important to remember that if you were to have lied, your punishment would have been ten times worse and would make it hard for your parents to trust you again. Lying might sometimes seem the easy way out at first, but honesty is the right and brave way. No matter how hard it might be to tell the truth, it is always the right thing to do. After all, honesty is the best policy. Well, that's all for today. Shabbat Shalom. My favorite part of Sabbath school is the music and the art. And I like watching them every Sabbath. Thank you. Hey guys. So, did you like the history lesson today? That's usually one of my favorites. I always learn so much when we do the history every week. So, you know what? What did we learn today? Um, about Joseph and his brothers. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what happens next? Wait. If you know what happens next, let's not spoil the surprise. Instead, I, I have... I know what happens next. It's a surprise. We'll have to wait till next week, right? I mean, we can't do two episodes in one. So, you know what? Let's wrap this up. We're going to have some more fun. We're going to have a craft and a song and Asher's favorite. What was that? Um, um, Esau. No, your favorite part that we do every week. And, yeah, and our closing prayer, but I have another surprise for you guys because this is our celebration, right, of our Trained Up in Torah one year anniversary or birthday or however you want to say it. Um, I have a celebration. I mean, I have, I have a surprise for you guys. You get to make a mess for just one time in the house. Are you ready? Hold on. Hang on, watch this. So, so again, you guys, if you have anything that you would like to share with our Train Up and Torah contributors, um, feel free to share it in Facebook. Have your parents send it to us. You can send a video or an audio. You can write a note. Um, you can, you know what, for a birthday, since it's our birthday, we're even sending out birthday cards to whomever would like one. You can pick a certain person if you really want to hear from certain somebody, or any of us would send you one. So as long as you just send us a request, we would love to send you guys and just connect with you guys however you would like to and send us a video or a review or you tell us what you like. We'll probably feature it on a future episode, and I think that would be pretty fun, don't you? So you guys, here's your surprise. For your, your part of the celebration. I'm going to have to clean this up. But we're, we're going to have some fun. You ready? Yeah. Oh, we're going to... One, two, three. Flick it. Woohoo! Shabbat shalom! Shabbat shalom! Let's do it again. Yeah, let's do it again. Let's <laughs> the Sabbath school. Let's be on Hi everybody, my name is Isarella. My name is Abigail. My name is Ruth. And we like Train Up and Torah, and we like the craft. I like the songs and the snacks. I like the uh, Hebrew. Goodbye, y'all have a good day. Have Bye. A good, have a Hey, Tori kids, we got a fun new song for you guys this week, so jump up and do it with us. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. Yahweh has a plan, so I'll walk in it. 
And Yahweh has a plan, so I'll walk in it. Yahweh has a plan, so I'll walk in it. Walk in His way every day. Yahweh has a plan, so I'll walk in it. Yahweh has a plan, so I'll walk in it. And Yahweh has a plan, so I'll walk in it. Walk in His plan every day. Yahweh has a plan, so I'll walk in it. And Yahweh has a plan, so I'll walk in it. And Yahweh has a plan, so I'll walk in it. Walk in His ways every day. I've been watching Trained Up in Torah for a few weeks now. What I really like about it is that it teaches you a lot about Yahuwah and Yeshua. And then I really like that they have stories. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you for being here for one year of Trained Up in Torah. This week, we are going over the memory verse, Bereshit 43.13. Bereshit 43.13 says, And take your brother, and arise, go back to the man. At this point in time, we see Jacob and his family have run out of their food supply and must return to Egypt for more. With much reluctance, Yaakov must ultimately let his youngest son Benjamin go with the other brothers to Egypt. Out of fear and extreme care for Benjamin, the brothers return to Egypt with additional silver and many gifts. Thankfully, when the brothers get there, they are treated with a feast in Yosef's home. When Yosef sees his younger brother Benjamin, he has to go in private and weep. Yosef still feels as though he should test his older brothers to see if they had truly changed. Once again, our memory verse is Bereshit 43, 13. And take your brother, and arise, go back to the man. Thank you again for being here, and thank you for all of our viewers who have watched with us for a year, and thank you to everyone who has made Trained Up in Torah possible. I pray you all have a wonderful week. Shabbat Shalom. Okay, my favorite thing about Trained Up in Torah is the Bible stories, just like when David beat Goliath, and even when when ja, and even when Moses I'm across the Red Sea, and even Joshua I'm knocking down the wall with Jericho, and even that's all. Hey guys, Miss Ashley here. Uh, back with you again this Sabbath with Trained Up in Torah, and we're going to do the craft today. You're going to need some kind of tape. This was all the tape I could find today, um, but any kind of tape will work. You're going to need tape, and you're going to need, oops, something to color with. I chose markers because I like how that fills in all the white spots the best. These are um, Joseph and his brothers, and we're going to make finger puppets out of them. Fun, right? So the first thing we're going to do is color it. You're going to find the link to this um, below, um, and you can just print this off at home. But hey, say you don't want to color it, you can print off the one that's already colored. Cool, huh? All right, but I think it's more fun to color, so that's what we're going to do today. Let's get started.
Now, all you have to do is cut out the rest and make more finger puppets. <clears throat> you might actually have to print two of these so that you have enough brothers. But then, you can reenact the story and have fun with your brothers and sisters or your mom and dad. Have fun. Shabbat Shalom. This week's snack idea is baklava. It's a pastry made with phyllo dough and nuts and honey and spices. And this makes me think about all the presents that Joseph's brothers were supposed to bring to the man in Egypt that their dad told him to bring. So we have some recipes in the description. We have um, recipes for making your own phyllo dough, even gluten-free recipes. So go check it out and let us know if you make it. Shabbat Shalom. I'm Boaz. I'm and three things I like about Trained Up in Torah is that it's fun. And it's, it, it teaches me scriptures in the way I understand it. And it makes me feel connected to other people who believe in Yahweh. Um, my, my two favorite things about Trained Up in Torah are the crafts, songs, and stories. And... So what else did we want to tell Trained Up in Torah? And I love everything you're doing at Trained Up in Torah. Thank you for, for um, posting the videos and making them. Yeah. Yahweh bless you. Yahweh bless Hello. you. Hello. Hello. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name, Yah. We thank you for all that you have done, sending us your Son to make a way for us. Yah, we thank you for our families. We thank you in the good times and in the bad. We thank you for our daily bread. Father, we thank you for your forgiveness, and we know that you have a plan for each and every one of us, for our good, to fill for your purpose. We praise your holy name again, Yah, and we come to you only because of your Son, Yeshua, who paid for our sins. Hallelujah.